What do you credit Bernie's rise to? Well, I think a lot of this is, is economic frustration. If you look at American workers, we're working longer hours than our peers in, in Europe. And instead, we're, we're told that we're, we're not doing enough. We're told that something like the opioid crisis is our fault. It's our fault that we're accumulating medical debt, student debt, and whatnot. So I think there's a feeling among people that they're playing by the rules and they're still not getting ahead. Is there an opportunity for Bernie Sanders to use those shared resentments to maybe bring some of those Trump voters over to his side who maybe share some of those same frustrations? Mm -hmm. Especially people who thought that Trump was going to offer something different. The thing we need to drive home is that Trump in power is a Republican Party in power. It's tax cuts for rich people. It's not helping ordinary people. But socialism, that term is a, is a touchy term in, in America. But I think for most people, uh, they just don't really know what it means. You know, I, I think because of the right has kind of cried wolf so many times, something like Obamacare or to increase the minimum wage, they've called that socialism. At this point, we really need to tell people, well, that's not exactly socialism, but it is a redistributive program that will help your, your lives and people aren't afraid of it anymore. Because this term socialism has been thrown around on, on the left and on the right in so many different ways, let's get back to some basics. Let's start with defining democratic socialism. Democratic socials believe that democracy is a good thing. And if it's a good thing in, in the political sphere, why don't we also have it in economic and social spheres as well? So what would it mean if we could combine uh, the existing system with a jobs guarantee? What would it mean if instead of just having the right to purchase health insurance, we have the right to just receive health care when we need it? And uh, we think that if you get these basic levels of rights that ordinary people will be able to contribute more to society and they'll they'll contribute to creating the wealth and prosperity will allow us to give these rights to other people as well. Can you walk me through the history of this movement in the United States? In the American tradition there was always a strain of labor republicanism. This idea that America should be a country based on free soil. It was a potent weapon in the abolitionist movement. There was always a streak of self-identified socialists. Socialists were involved in the creation of our early unions. In the 1960s, some of the leaders of the movement for civil rights, even Martin Luther King later in his life, were all self-described socialists. We never had our own independent labor party, so we were forced to create coalitions with the most progressive of liberals. And I think what we are seeing with the Bernie Sanders movement is a recreation of this, this alliance. When I've been traveling the country and talking to voters, moderate Democrats, even moderate Republicans, moderate Republicans who do not like Trump and are interested in maybe voting for a Democrat, what I hear from a lot of them is Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, we just can't. This is not the time to be talking about socialism. What do you say to those moderates that are pretty terrified of a Sanders nomination? The core of Sanders' economic program is in, is in fact quite popular. And I think one way to think about Sanders is not as this crazy radical, but as someone who has a coalition that kind of resembles a new Obama coalition. Lots of young people, a bunch of voters that, that haven't turned out a lot in the past, younger Latino voters, uh, and lower income voters. And I think that a lot of Trump voters who voted for him in 2016 won't necessarily be turning out again for him. You know, if you don't want Trump in the White House, you have to go out there, you have to knock on doors, you have to talk talk to people, you have to support down-ballot Democrats. And this term, democratic socialism, is it helping or hurting Sanders? It's meaningless to most Americans and will remain meaningless until we actually connect this term with day-to-day -day improvement in their lives. Bernie Sanders' rhetoric is repetitive. It's the same thing over and over again, and that's a good thing, because you look at these other Democrats, even Democrats I like, people like Elizabeth Warren, they're running on a laundry list of policy. Where's the narrative? Where's the anger? Where's the passion? I think Sanders is the one that could actually galvanize people. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.